Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from the quarantine cabin up in Harlem, New York City. We're here every single day with your Freed by Noon edition. That's right. We are daily. Oh, what? 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 Whoa, oh, 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 oh. What, did, what did you say? I said daily. You heard me right. Sing it in the streets. Every day, you and me, talking every day, everyday people. That's right. Every single day, Freed by Noon Edition, we're coming with emails. We're coming with coronavirus rant. We're coming with a charcuterie chat. Today's going to be a little bit of a different episode. We're going to do some emails in the beginning. Keep sending them in. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Then we have a very special new segment called Judge J Train, where I will decide on a case that has been presented to me, the court of Sultan of Scream, and we will make come to an, uh, an adjournment, okay? But let's get to the emails. Very excited. Keep sending them in. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. We got your emails. We're going to do the Judge J Train, and then we're going to do some quick hits, and then we're out of here. Um, let me let me start. Let's go with this. Freed by Noon Submission. Hey, Jared. Love your work, and thank you for the laughs. I'm a 27-year-old female working in NYC, and I haven't been in a serious, rela- serious long-term relationship in about seven years. I'm thinking this may be because of my narrow taste in guys, so I've decided to expand it. I've started swiping right on guys I don't instantly find super attractive. Definitely a little attraction, though, in hopes that we will have a great convo if we ever meet, and I'll be more attracted to him. However, when they match back, I regret it and sometimes just let the convo fade or just don't answer. A few months ago, I swiped right on a guy I normally wouldn't have, and we ended up dating for four months. However, it ended badly. He ghosted me. Am I approaching the apps wrong with this method? Am I being tasteless or should I keep going for it since I don't really hurt? It doesn't really hurt to just get out there and meet new guys, expand my taste, see what's out there, etc. Any other advice? I love this email. Keep sending them in. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Here's, here's the problem with just be, there's two different things. You have to have taste and have to have a standard. So that doesn't mean, and and then when people think that they're like, ooh, picky about guys and picky about looks, they're like, well, then I, that means I'm meeting less people. No, 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 no. You're meeting less people that are not that are more right for you. You're not just, you're getting out of the way. I think it's better to be picky, way better to be picky. And right now you might be being a little bit more, loose, so to speak, with your swipes. Right now, you're bored, you're at home, the quarantine's in full gear, you got nothing else to do but eat and swipe and drink. And you're like, you know, why not? Here's the problem with loosening your standard. It's actually inhumane to dump someone. It's not natural to end a relationship in the way we do now. Back in the day, Because nowadays, you meet so many more people that are just fine. Back in the day when it was just your neighbors and it was some person that you got fixed up with by an aunt, yeah, you couldn't be too stringent. You couldn't be too picky. Now, because you can be very picky, you let more people in and it's more wasting time. So what I mean by, and to go back to the point I made in the beginning, It's inhumane. So what you end up doing is you have a lot of fine conversations with someone who's just okay. And then you're like, "Mm, I don't know. And then you feel bad about ending it with someone that there's really nothing wrong with. That's the problem. You're opening up the gates, not to the crazies, not to the people you're not attracted to. You're opening it up to the just okays. The just okays are harder to break up with than the shitheads. The shitheads, you're like, look at this fucking shithead. And everyone goes, yeah, kill him. End the relationship. And you go, good, get him out of here. The just okays, you go, well, I did find love. And they are a nice person. And they did pay for dinner. And I don't know. I don't want to be a dick. That 
is normal. That is human to feel that way. So what you end up doing is wasting more of your time on the just okays. That is also not to say that, you know, if you're being too picky, there's, there's also a difference between being too picky and having standards. The minute you're too picky is when you're going, well, they don't look like they'd be a nice person. It's like, okay, get the fuck over yourself. But know that the more you let in, the harder it is to get them out. Think of it like a party. If you let everyone into the party, then try to finish, try to end that party. Ain't happening. Not going to go. At the 10 o'clock when you wish everyone would leave, you're sitting there being like, oh, how do I get these people out? I barely even know them. But they are nice and they're not being, they're not making too much noise. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Like this email. Went home to social distance and guy who won't call me a girlfriend wants to visit. Hi, Jared. Hope all is well. Thanks for the extra quarantine content. I've been dating a guy since the start of January. Things are great. We talk every day, hang out a couple times a week, and the sex is sexy. IRL and on text. He's made it clear that we are exclusive, but says he doesn't want to use the girlfriend-boyfriend label yet because it's still new. Hmm. What's the difference? What's the difference? The difference is... He doesn't want to have a real dumping with you. It makes the breakup easier. After working from my apartment for a week, I went back home to Philadelphia to avoid the craziness of New York City's shutdown. He said he wanted to visit me at home and meet my parents. After suggesting the visit, he's been a little wishy-washy, nervous about the virus, worried about the drive. I should just come back to the city. Let's go camping instead, etc. Camping? I already asked my parents if he could stay with us, so it's a little annoying that he's changed things now. I'd be so happy to have him visit for a weekend, but definitely don't want to push it. Why is he backtracking now, and what's my move? He's backtracking because he was just trying to say something that would make you feel good so that he would get credit for it in a situation where he didn't think he'd ever get called to do it. He wrote a check his ass can't cash. He this is and a lot of people do this. People write uh, checks of love that they know you'll never cash out so that they sound like someone who will write who can afford the check of love. He can't. It's the same thing. This is the physical version of exclusive but not in a relationship. This is the physical version because exclusive and not in a relationship is him saying Hey, I want all the credit of being exclusive to you with none of the responsibility of being a boyfriend. That's what that is. This is what he, when he says, I want to come to your place, when he knew that he'd get out of it and didn't think that you'd ever, you think he ever thought your parents would be okay with him coming in, a probably a, a COVID drenched person just waltzing into their house and spending the weekend after they've never met him? You think he thought that would be okay and just your parents would be like, ooh, bring in the boy that's fucking you. He thought he was off the hook. So now he's trying to cover up. It's like he's trying to pay a loan with more loans because he's like, oh, man, I can't cover this going home to her parents. Hmm. How can I pay this off? Oh, no. Here, I'll take a loan from the hike store. We should do a hike sometime. This is a Ponzi scheme of promises. Because he starts it with, we should go to your house. We Oh, we'll come over. Ah, I don't know. We should hike. Oh, let's go hiking. Ah, we should take a private jet. Let's go on the private jet. Ah, let's just, we should go cuddle. Okay, well, cuddle doesn't erase the, the, the hike and the parents and the private jet. At some point, the Ponzi scheme of love will be broken. And the same goes for this relationship. So I, I don't think... He's, that's why he's backtracking. I don't think there is a move. I think you lay off it. I think at this point, you have to see what kind of effort he's willing to put into a relationship. It doesn't sound like much. It sounds like he's willing to put in a lot of word time, but not a lot of feet time. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Let's go to the inbox Help, is my ex sleeping with his friend he seems to be quarantined with? 
Jared, feather, feather, and good COVID to you and yours. <laughs> Been a fan of You Up J Train podcast for a while. You Up got me through a terrible breakup last year. I even talked about the podcast to my therapist, and now she's an avid listener too. Teletherapist to add teletherapist to list. Love it. That's how it works, people. Here, people, I, someone sent me, that's going to be a luxury lounge later. Okay. Tell a friend. That's how you pay for the podcast. Make it your Instagram story. Tell a friend. Tell a therapist. Tell a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa. Everyone needs to take their brain and put it on the shelf. Give them the gift of Papa JT. Let me take over their thoughts for an hour to get them away from the stress and anxiety that is all around us. Anyways, I'm writing to ask you for your advice. After dating long distance for a couple of years, I moved to my ex's city and we moved in together. Long story short, things did not end up working out and I moved back home. While long distance, my ex had a very close girlfriend he would hang out with a lot. I trusted him, and while I sometimes questioned it, I ultimately decided to trust him. When I moved to his city, I befriended this girl while they still remained super close. Now that I've moved away, the two of them are pretty much now the only two single friends in their great friend group of married people having babies. So jump to today and our current quarantine sitch. I still follow them both on social media and I'm seeing the girl posting from his or or, from our old apartment. She's doing workout videos in the living room, posting about care packages she's received. Obviously, this raises red flags for me uh, that they seem to be quarantined together. My gut says they are 100% sleeping together, dating, and my friend and my mind trying. My gut says. They are 100% sleeping together, dating. And my mind trying to be rational says they are both solo and want to hang out with during this weird time. I finally got fed up and asked my ex about it, and he said something to the tune of, yeah, she's been over a bit given the lockdown isolation status. And sort of brushed it off. While I very much moved on and I'm in a new, much healthier and happier relationship now, I can't help feel like I was getting played the entire time we were together and part of me feels betrayed if they are in fact together now. So, given this info, do you think they're sleeping together slash dating? Two, am I in the right for feeling hurt if that's the case? Apologize for the manifesto here, but would really like your insight. So, I want to thank her for this email. She asks, are they dating and are they sleeping together? Let me, Shelby, put on some caring, touching music. Shelby, hit the music. Dear listener, I want to thank you for choosing the J Train podcast during your quarantine hours. There's a lot of podcast choices out there and you chose to bring your question of whether your ex is fucking his old friend to this podcast. And I thank you. The answer is they are boning. They're going down on each other. He's he's doing doggy style. She's doing missionary. He's licked her nipple. She's licked his balls. There might have been some ass play because of the quarantine situation. I don't think if you were in a relationship where you felt it was good, you, I would say you would have seen that this was happening. She brings up a couple of good points in her emails. She says they're the two single friends in their friend group of married people. Okay, you know what that means? The married people are all off quarantining together. They looked at each other, but Food can only stay in the fridge so long. So if you are sitting there with the opposite sex during a time where you can't really go out and meet new people, you can't go to the bar. So there's the excuse built in that they both look at each other and they go, that sandwich is sitting in the fridge. We may have never wanted to eat that sandwich before, but now is the time. Uh, If I got to eat, it's sitting right there. So they're eating each other. And yes, they're fucking I don't know if I could trace. I can't be guarantee you that this was happening behind your back. I do guarantee you that when you have a breakup, when you are lonely, 
when you are alone, when you are quarantined, you're looking for someone to rub skin with. It might be the wrong person. It might be the person you never thought you'd do it with, but it's going to be someone. You're gonna make a lot of choices right now. There's only so much food in the fridge and boys gotta eat, girls gotta eat. Do you have a right to feel hurt? You have a right to feel however you wanna feel. No one can tell you how to feel. What you should be doing, you have a right to self-care. You've already talked to your boyfriend. He gave, What's he going to say to you? What's he going to say to you? He knows how disruptive this is. You called him and you are like, so what's going on with your old friend? And he was like, ah, you know, she comes over, isolation, quarantine. Ah, get off the phone with me. I don't want to talk to you anymore. What's he going to say to you? Hey, yeah, uh, you know the girl that you thought I was hooking up with while we were together? Uh, I wasn't then. But, you know, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, you have genitals? Oh, shit. And we came to that conclusion because you're never going to believe that. That's the more likely scenario. The more likely scenario is not the reality TV version. The reality TV version is they were sneaking around behind your back. But that's not what was happening. They, you would have just broken up earlier. The real version is, eh, you know, we're just, you know, so we got to come. That's the real version. Two people that are like, I got to come. So can you feel hurt by that? Yes. Should you unfollow both of them on social media? Yes. I think it's really hard right now to watch someone else live the life you would have had. And that's kind of what you're watching. Since you lived in that apartment, you're watching. Some, and no one will blame you for walking out of that situation. No one's going to blame you for walking out of the burning building of this situation. So I think you should walk away. I think it's okay to feel hurt because a relationship ended and you're seeing exactly what yours would have been, but you're only seeing the good moments. You're only seeing the goods. You're not seeing when they're in bed, like uh, when one of them's sleeping, the other one's like, how do I get her out of here? How do I get them out? J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. He definitely loves me not. Jared, thanks for the great advice in the pod. Fan of both you up and J-Train. Appreciate all you do. Especially the great distraction from this craziness. Here's my situation. I'm in my early 40s and been dating, hooking up with a guy in his mid-40s on and off since October. Here's the bullet point version of events. Two dates in October with great end-of-night makeouts. Uh, he disappeared for a month after ignoring a text or two from me and then showed back up apologizing during a drunk night out with friends. I got a text from him and I invited him back to my place where we had sex. Okay, two dates in October, disappears for a month, gets dr during, oh, he showed back, two dates in October, he showed back up apologizing, then during a drunk night out with her friends, got a text from him, invited back to the place, they had sex. Two weeks later, I cooked dinner for him, his request, we slept together again. He went silent, not responding to a text from me, and then texted two weeks later, and I met him for a drink before the city closed down, and we slept together again. So now we're social distancing. I texted him to see how it's going and the conversation eventually leads to sexting. During the sexting, he was about to come and he, so he said, and he texts, tell me you love me. I was like, huh? I asked him if he was, was gonna say it back and he said he was. So I texted him and he said, I love you too. There's no way he thinks I love him, right? No, no, no. Uh, any text or thing said in the course of sex that hasn't been said, anything said with a boner isn't something said at all. Remember that. If someone has a boner while they're saying it, it doesn't count. That is a kink at that point. That is not real love. That is what gets him off. He is getting the boner to fruition. Okay? So if, it, if the guy has a boner, don't believe what he said. If a guy hasn't come yet, don't believe what he said. You only believe everything after coming. There's no way he lo I love it. He thinks I love him, right? Why would he ask me to do that? It's his kink. That's what he gets him off. It's a it's a narcissism thing. That's everyone has it in them. Everyone is a little bit gross, and the grossness happens in different ways. Some people, it's having. They're fucking, you know, like they're having their piss down. That you're pissing on their eyes. Other people, it's I love you. Other people, it's a certain race or a body type. This is the weird part about sex is that none of us are talking about it. 
We're all watching it, and we don't want porn, but we don't want what the fuck we do. We want something in the middle that no one will judge us for. So this guy wants an I love you, you know, like, like his mom used to say. And it's fucked up, but everyone's a little fucked up. And if he really doesn't want me to fall in love with him, he's given me very mixed signals. Yeah, granted, I never told him what I needed standard-wise because he gave me no reason to think he was serious. If he had, I would have said the whole th whole text when you feel like it thing wasn't going to work for me. Is this just a sex thing? He's been married before, so I can't imagine this is what he thinks dating is. This is what he thinks sex is. All things said during boners are not to be believed or taken seriously. That's the reality. So while you were sexting, he says, say, I love you. This is all. Listen, <clears throat> the same goes for you two as a couple. If we go back to the email, she says, we went on two dates. Then he disappears. He apologizes. Then all of a sudden he comes back when he's ready to fuck. When you invite him over. Yeah, he's been lying until he came and then he disappears again. Now he wants dinner. Disappears again. This will be the process with this guy. He will never be serious. He will always be cool to you until he comes and then he'll go away and then up again and down again the boner we go. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Let's do this one. Even the self-quarantine doesn't stop exes from sliding into the DM. Feather, feather, love the pod. I've gotten several friends to listen as well. Come to Cincinnati, Ohio sometime. I'd love to. Once this is all over, I'm going to be touring, okay? Your boy Papa JT is going to get back on the great road of this nation to do shows for you with new material. So come on out, jaredfree.com. The tour dates are already moving to the fall. So all fall, I will be touring all fall. So long story short, an ex cheated on me back in June. So I broke it off in July and hadn't really heard from him since. Today, I received a text from him sharing his at-home quarantine workout. I've attached the video here. I'm still in tears laughing. I'm sure my current boyfriend will get a nice confidence boost after seeing this bullshit. Truly not the... So she sent the video. I can't watch it because I have to download it. But yeah, there... Well, listen. Not only are you going to get reached out to by exes, but you're going to get reached out to by everyone who's starting their business. Everyone's got a little more time in their hands, so everyone's going to be, huh, let me make that jewelry I was thinking of making. Huh, let me try that meme account I was thinking of doing. Huh, have you noticed what's going on? So yeah, you're going to get a text from someone weird asking you to check out their new fitness tips and to follow them on Instagram. It's coming. It's probably already came. Boyfriends read receipts. My boyfriend had his read receipts on and will constantly read my messages and not respond for hours. This isn't just when a conversation naturally ends. This is also when I ask a question, try to make plans, etc. It drives me nuts. So how should I bring it up to him? Should I even bring it up? We all get busy, but my my thought is if you have time to read it, if you have time, uh, if you have time to re read it, you have time to reply. Uh, I don't really buy the if you have time to re read it, you have time to reply thought i think he's trying when you have read receipts on or read receipts i however you want to put it that is that is a message also so just think every time you read that read that's them saying read it got it that's a text that's an actual text that's them going got it thumbs up that's all they're saying when they do the read receipt that's what that means. I have, so my mom has read receipts on and it is like one of those things that like, it's nice to see, but I never, with my mom, I'm never like, is she mad at me? Does she still like me? So that's easy for me. I can understand where you're in a relationship. You're going, well, he read it. Why won't he answer my question? To me, the red receipt is if you count it as a text, then it's easier. So if you see, if you ask a question, you see red 15 minutes later, you have the right of, if you said, hey, are we going out tonight? And he wrote, got it. Then you have the right to text back, hey, are we going out tonight? That If you treat it as a text, then you won't feel so bad double texting. You shouldn't feel bad double texting anyways, but if you take a read receipt as being, got it, 
So every read receipt, just say, got it. And now you can go, oh, okay, now I know which ones I should be double texting and which ones are just a got it. If a got it makes sense, then you're good. Hey, I'll see you tonight at eight. Red. Got it. All right, nothing else to say. Hey, are we going out tonight at eight? Got it. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean you got it or, or we're going out at eight? Got it. Hey, you're acting a little weird. You've read this twice. I've gotten your two reds. I don't know if that means we're going out at eight or if if you have or if you aren't going out at eight. See? See how you now use the language that you've given yourself? J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Let's do one more email. J Train Podcast and send it, keep sending them in. Then we're gonna go to Judge J Train in a minute. Jared, huge fan of your podcast. Helped me get through uh, this lockdown. So long story short, I used to work with this guy for over a year, and everyone thought we should date because we had a great connection. We did make out and were flirty to each other, but eventually when I brought up possibly taking it one step further, he said he was hesitant because we worked together but would consider the thought if we didn't work together. He quit three months ago and still stayed in touch weekly and have had dinner once. But when I asked him to hang out, he always says he's busy, for sure wants to, and we def can hang out. Everyone tells me that I should give him space, that I'm too available for him. Will giving him space eventually actually make him come back? Or is that something girls just think? Would love to know your thoughts and hopefully you're staying healthy. Here's what I would say to you. He is being just nice enough to have sex with you at his convenience. So that's why he says, yeah, I'd love to hang out. Yeah, we should hang out sometime because it's going to come when he wants to. He has had three months to pursue you as an actual partner. So now you know the work excuse was an excuse. Now you know that we should hang out was an excuse. He wants to be just nice enough. Also, you have to understand that when you meet someone at work and everyone tells you to get together and then you do get together, the work people, that's all they ask about. Oh, you got together? So how's it been? What happened? He doesn't want to be a dick to you and he doesn't want to be a dick to all the work people who are watching the relationship. So my advice to you, if you go away, he will show up again like a virus. He will all of a sudden you know, cock season will come into form and he's going to go, oh, hey, because he was always just nice enough and he will use his just nice enough credit to then cash in. But it will never be a date. It'll never be two dates. It'll never be three dates. It'll never be the Instagram. So if you're looking for a relationship that could be pursuit and him trying to get with you, you need to say, hey, this ain't the guy. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com let's go to the court session uh let's get into court right now all rise for judge j train court is in order i present the case of the loud neighbor jared freed versus the debbie downer neighbor now listen, today hit the music, Shelby. Today we know. Uh, today I got a, a, a. Today, my doorman rang me on the intercom system, and he said, "Hey, Jared, I got a hot tip for you. One of the other people in the building was complaining about you yesterday, being on your terrace and being too loud." Then today, they got a video of you, and they complained to management. Just want to let you know. And the reason he's letting me know is because he likes me. It's because I'm a good neighbor. It's because I'm a good uh, citizen of the building. So then, I get an email today, and I'm going to read you the email, okay? Noise complaint. Hi, Jared. Hope you are well, and you and your family are keeping safe and healthy during this difficult time. An... A resident sent us the attached video and reported this has been quite disruptive to them. We wanted to make sure you were aware that we received a formal complaint on this, and I wanted to bring it to your attention. Although this is likely during non-quiet hours, the resident felt this has been disruptive to them for the last two days. Can you please take this into consideration? Thank you. I was out on the deck 
taping a cameo, which you can you can use me on cameo if you'd like. I'll, I'll shout at you on cameo. Get wishing them well during their pregnancy. This happened. I will give you high, high end ten minutes, low end three minutes. Let's call it eight. Eight minutes of me saying, hey, just want to say what's up. Eight minutes. You couldn't knock on my door and say, hey, just wanted to let you know it's a little loud and I'm trying to do some work. And I know we're all working from home and trying to figure out our schedules, but just want to let you know it was a little loud. And I, and I could say, and then we could have a conversation, human to human. But no, uh-uh. You had to run to management. You had to let them know. You got to go to the cops. Teacher, teacher, you forgot to collect the homework. First of all, it was at 11.30 in the morning. If you're not up by 11.30, you should just not wake up at all. You should just stay in bed, honey, because the bills aren't getting paid today. Also, it was for f eight minutes, eight minutes of, 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 and I'm not even being this loud. I'm the Joe Exotic of this building. If you've watched Tiger King, I'm Joe Exotic. I have found my Carol Baskin. And you know what, Carol? You're wrong. It was at 11.30 in the morning. I'm, I'm doing it for two. It wasn't even the morning. It was 12.30. I'm doing it for eight minutes. And what are you going to do? What have you been waiting by the doorstep with your camera? Waiting to take me down in my own home? The judge has ruled in favor of the Sultan of Scream J Train. That's right. You're out of order. You're wrong. And listen, we're all going through this. We're all trying to figure stuff out. This is this is this work from home situation is gonna take time. Week two, you have one day of evidence and one videotape. If I were you, I would have came at me with 30 videotapes and I'd be taping me right now. You, you don't even have free by noon chalked up to show them that I'm a crazy person. You aren't even prepared for the case. If I'm judged as a judge, I can't allow someone who's so ill-prepared to make such an argument. You've wasted this whole courthouse's time. Send them to the jail. Throw them in. Take away their internet. No Netflix for a week. That's been Judge J Train. You can send in your Judge J Train, and I will rule on it on future episodes. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. That is our episode. A very special Freed by Noon. Keep sharing. Keep. Oh, we're going to do. My bad. Let's do some quick hits. Here we go. Hit the music, Shelby. How do you feel about drinking again? It's. I, I, I had. So I hadn't drank from. January 1st to February 21st, I didn't drink. February 21st is my birthday. I had a couple celebratory cocktails, not much, and then I didn't drink again until the quarantine came about. And it felt good night one. It felt fine night two. Night three, I had a little too much wine. I think I'm down. I think one glass of whiskey and I'm out, but I don't even want to go down that road. I think I'm going to pop out of it again. I'm not back back. But I'm also not gone forever. So it's been nice. It was nice one night. I, I love it. I want drinking to feel special to me. I don't want it to feel normal. So I'm. that was the whole point of coming off of booze. So I think I, I'm going to go back to making it special. Dumb to reach out to an ex during quarantine, feeling desperate and bored. Reach out to family, friends. Call people you've never called before. I call. I spent a half hour with a, one of my best friends from high school today. It felt good to talk, and he wasn't like, what are you calling for? We FaceTimed for a while. We had a great time. Call people that you text but never call. Put on your headphones. It feels great. How long do I wait to, for my boyfriend to say I love you back? Listen, you have to own your I love you and then go and, and then Un and then go on checking in with yourself that you feel fulfilled and still feel loved. If you feel loved, you are loved. So I understand where it's like you want to keep this I love you score, but if that's why you're saying I love you, maybe you don't love them. Maybe you're just trying to win. How do you identify a low-key fuckboy? Well, if they don't 
if they if they don't take you out, if they don't make an effort that you feel fulfilled by, then they're being a fuck boy or fuck girl. Not looking for anything serious right now, or right, uh, not looking for anything serious right now, or not looking for anything serious with you. I don't know. I don't. It does. I've said on before on the podcast that they're not looking for anything serious with you, but I mean that. But at the same time, that's not your problem. You asked them to be serious. That's why you're getting the answer to this question. Or they've said it because to warn you that they won't be serious. So you have to take that information, digest it, and move on knowing that's you have to take people at their word and it's not your problem. I like to plan dates and not really text in between. I don't know how to say that nicely to a texter. All you, that is, when you say I like to, I like to plan dates and not text in between. That's you saying who you are versus being who you are. If that's who you are, then you say, hey, it was cool talking to you. Let me know when you want to go out. That's how you be who you are. You don't have to be Mother Teresa of fucking texting where I'm an old school lover who only likes to make plans. No, no, no. You're not above us. You're just letting the conversation go so you don't have to hear an answer you don't want to hear. The blame is on you. Ideas to keep things hot with husband during quarantine. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Next time you're having sex, you kiss down his body and you you kiss right and then as you and then you go down to his penis okay and then you're kissing around the penis and then i want you to take that pointer finger put it right in your mouth and boop right up the behind that'll shake things up i've been uh, if we've both been quarantined for 2 weeks can we break social distancing and meet up i think I'm not going to be the one to tell you to or not to. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I don't know shit. All I know is if you two are social distancing from everyone else and you're young and spry, this isn't about you. This is about the people you come in contact with to see each other. You two might be making a decision, but does that person interact with their grandparents, their their Uber driver, their, their, their door people, their security guards? That's where it comes into play, and that's what you have to think about. Um, red flag if boyfriend left out, left our quarantine to run home to mammy and pappy after week one. It's just who they are. You have now, this is just like someone not paying for the date. You have the right to take that information, put it into your mind and on the resume of, do you like them? So if your boyfriend after week one was like, I'm going to go home to my parents. All right. Are you more attracted or less attractive with that information in mind? How to suggest sexting from quarantine while in a new relationship. You have to do it at the right time. So you take a bath during the sexy hours later in the night when you know they're up and just be like, hey, I'm touching myself while in the bath. What are you doing? That is enough of a cuckoo, cuckoo. That's a bird call to to all the roosters. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast. You can send your quick hit questions. I always put it up before we start taping on Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram at Jared Free. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, friend, friend. Tell someone about the podcast. We'll be back next episode. Boom.